welcome. This is a yin yang yoga class. So we're gonna start with some yin, nice, long, slow practice. We do that to kind of put a little bit of stress on the connective tissue, just enough that you feel it in the hopes that we'll kind of create this kind of hydrating fluid um, in between the layers of fascia and skin and fascia and muscle. So everything will move a little smoother. And then the second half will be mm, taking advantage of that <laughs> and moving in some kind of nice smooth patterns with a bunch of standing poses. Um, and then some, you know, we'll finish up on the ground again. <laughs> so hopefully that's a good pattern for you. For the early part of this, you might want some soft props. So I have a blanket and I have a pillow and some yoga blocks, but throw pillows, blankets, towels, anything you've got handy will work. So I'm gonna roll my blanket up. That's gonna go underneath my knees. And I'm just gonna lie down on the floor, but you could build like a little slope or a couple, you could put a stack of pillows up underneath your back so you're held um, in a more reclined position as opposed to just lying down. Okay. Now, what we're gonna do with the legs is a butterfly. So this is a reclining butterfly pose. I'm gonna take out my hair clip real quick. And so I, like, if I do this without any props underneath my legs, I'm still, I can still do the pose. So you don't really have to have props, but what I like about them is that it will hold me right at the point where I just feel that sensation. There are, there are small creatures in my world who are currently um, hell-bent on destruction. So <laughs> if you hear any crashing noises, just ignore those. <laughs> Hopefully they will get bored of knocking things off of tables. In any case, <laughs> coming back around to the yoga. So if I put this blanket just right at the, uh, the point where I just feel that stretch in my inner thigh, one, it's a little more comfortable. Two, my body relaxes, right? Um, and then the third thing is that it keeps me from doing things that are too far and then leading to injury. So for me, the props are just a way to sort of modify every pose to my own range of motion and to work in that zone where I just feel the sensation, but I can still relax. So you can, of course, do the practice in your way, but just keep those things in mind. Now we're gonna stay with this pose for about four minutes. We're just gonna let ourselves relax, breathe, check, you know, kind of disconnect from the stuff that's been on your to-do list or your agenda for the day. Let go of any things you've got on your list for stuff you're gonna do later and just let yourself hover here in the present moment with the breath and the, you know, whatever you might find, like. There might be light coming through your windows or there might be a particular temperature that you could feel against your skin. Just whatever the phenomenon are, there might be small furry creatures knocking stuff off of tables around you. <laughs> Whatever's going on in your environment, just become a part of it. <laughs> and let go of all the future and past stuff for now. We'll come back to that later. For me, it's just an opportunity to clear my mind, notice my breath, relax every muscle.
stay for a few more breaths, about four or five. And when we first come out of this pose in a few moments, um, you can either just sort of slide your legs out straight or you can bring the knees together. So whichever you think will be the best option. On your exhale, find you just go ahead and make one of those choices. <laughs> and then once you're there, if you have any props underneath you, you can take any out that you're ready to take out. So I'm just going to take the blanket out from under my legs. If you need to stay a little bit more elevated, you can certainly keep a little bit of like your head elevated or your upper back and head um, elevated. Um, but you may want to take out anything that might be under your lower back or under your legs so that we have a, a little bit more freedom for a twist. So. Oh, I'm going to give myself a nice full body stretch <laughs> before I get around to that twist. And then I'm going to do these little kind of windshield wiper moves. Now, if you'd rather, you can bring your knees into your chest and rock back and forth that way. Just give yourself like a chance to sort of start to check into the twist. So if you twist to the left, how does that feel? If you twist a little bit to the right, how does that feel? And if there's an a direction that feels like you want to do that one first, then you might go ahead and choose that. So for me, it's pretty much even. I don't have um, the, sometimes I have a feeling like one side's a little tighter than the other, but I'm not having that sensation today. So I'm going to go to my right first. I'm just going to bring my legs over to the right. Now I've got a little pillow that I put underneath my bottom leg and then my top leg, I'm going to kind of hook that over the top. So it's like halfway to eagle pose <laughs> on the legs, if that makes sense. And then this is a relaxed practice. So rather, sometimes I'll really actively kind of use my abdominal muscles to lengthen, but instead I'm gonna use them just long enough to get my upper back nice and level on the floor. Again, you can have like a blanket or something underneath your upper back if you need to kind of provide a little bit more support. You can, of course, add more support to your legs but if you can, get both shoulder blades to mostly rest evenly on the floor. Now the arms can be stretched out or held close to the body or held overhead even. So you can experiment with different arm positions that work for you. And you can turn your head to the right or the left or leave it sort of balanced with the um, upper back looking straight up at the ceiling, whatever feels nice. Then relax everything. So once you've gotten yourself all settled in, see if you can't let every muscle relax. And we'll stay for about three minutes with this pose and then we'll do the other side. Check in with your breath again, letting yourself kind of ease in and out with the breath. Sometimes I use each exhale as an opportunity to just remind myself to let go and relax again. It feels like the right half of the breath for that.
inside of our last minute here, just a wee bit longer. Take a nice big breath, let go with a sigh, and then you can either hug your navel in or take a big breath and come on back to the center. So I just let my leg kind of guide me over. A little bit of movement might be nice. I always like to stretch my legs all the way out um, because there's often a little bit of a difference on the side that was on the top versus the side that was on the bottom of the twist, if that makes sense. <laughs> My left leg feels a little longer than my right leg. So that's a really interesting and pleasant sensation. <laughs> I also like to just pause for a moment, kind of give everything a little bit of a shimmy or a little bit of a um, really gentle movement before I do the bigger movements of the windshield wipers generally. But whatever is your um, speed or preference. So I've moved my pillow over to the other side that I was using to support my legs on the last twist. And I'm not quite ready to go into the twist because as I go from one side to the other, I can feel the difference in my spine still. So within another breath or two, that will dissipate and it will feel pretty even again. And that's when I know it's time, yep, now, <laughs> it's time to do the other side because I can feel that that change has occurred. So coming over, making a little space. And again, I use my abdominal muscles and my shoulders and my legs and everything to get myself in position. And then whoo, try to really relax and let go. The more support you can create, the, more, the easier it is for the body to relax. Now, the body can relax, you know, under varying circumstances, but Definitely, like the more we create a kind of uh, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of like soft is not exactly the right word, but the more we create an environment that feels comfortable to our body, the more our nervous system is able to relax. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> soft is the only word that would come into my brain. Sometimes as I relax, especially like this side for me is a little bit more um, resistant. It has a little bit more tightness, not quite as big a range of motion. Sometimes I have to readjust the props a little bit here and there as my body relaxes, I'll know. Don't be afraid to readjust your props. But if you find yourself being really um, fidgety, like you just can't, it's hard to settle. Sometimes the slower practice can be like that. See if you can allow yourself to really tune in again to those exhales and like recognize that that's sort of a mental um, fluctuation. So when we feel like we're wasting time or we're kind of fidgety, that's often more the mind than the body. Although if your body's really uncomfortable, you should make, take some steps to make it a little bit more comfortable. Let's see if you can just be present for the breath and let your mind relax a little bit, let go. Easier said than done, for sure. Yogis, we got about four more breaths to go.
I'm gonna take a really big breath, let go with a sigh, oh, and then I'm bringing myself back to the center. <laughs> and then we'll release. Release the pose. Oh. Add some stretch. You can really do any amount of movement that you like. We're gonna wind up in a seated position for a little, uh, one more little sequence to our yin here. And we'll do that seated. So if you need to do a little bit of movement before you get there, like you wanna do some little cat cow shapes or you wanna spend a little bit of time um, doing a little downward dog, you can do those first. And then meet me back up at the seated pose. <laughs> so I'm just going to talk for a second. If you're doing your thing, carry on. Um, <laughs> so we're going to, the seated pose that we're going to start with is a, uh, a dragonfly or a half dragonfly. You can pick. <laughs> whichever one you like the best. So the legs are gonna be in a V. Now, that being said, a lot of us have um, bone structure that when we put the legs out in a V, the pelvis wants to lean backwards. So there's a couple ways to deal with that. You can sit up on the cushion or up on a blanket. You can bend your knees and put some support like a pillow or a blanket underneath your knees. Or you can have a little bit more shallow V. For some people, just bringing the V in a little bit is all that's really necessary. Um, so <laughs> you can try that. So I'm doing a little bit of support under my knees because even though my pelvis pretty much sits upright, it's much more comfortable on the little um, connective tissue <laughs> lives on the back of my knee, those tendons that connect my calves and my hamstrings to my knee. Okay. So I've got this little rolled up blanket underneath and this back of the knee can be really sensitive. So just make sure there's nothing that's feeling really pokey or intense there. So what we're gonna do is pick a leg. So I'm gonna go to the left first. So um, the left leg is gonna stay straight and I'm gonna fold over that in a sec in some way. And then you can, I'm gonna leave my right leg straight, but you could also bend your right knee and then that would give you the half dragonfly over the full dragonfly. One wing, <laughs> one wing dragonfly. So you can fold directly forward over this leg. So that you know, the chest uh, rib cage just kind of land or comes towards the thigh. It may not land on the thigh, but it comes that direction. Or you can turn sideways and put the side of your ribs there and do a big side stretch. Okay, so that's up to you, whichever one. They're both gonna hit um, the lower back. So which one is the more comfortable vari variation? And then the other possibility or consideration uh, for your consideration anyway, is um, that one may be a little more intense than another or it might um, hit like the muscles just a little bit differently so that there's less problems. I enjoy both, but this um, kind of forward bending where the ribs are more even for me is a little bit kinder to these little muscles that live between my hip and my bottom ribs um, along the, you know, kind of, kind of close to my spine along my side waist. So that's my preference. And then I've kind of built myself a little structure here so that I can rest my forehead on something because that's more comfortable. But you don't have to rest your forehead. You can just fold. If it doesn't make it all the way to your shin <laughs> and you want it to rest on something, you can build up whatever props you've got. Even a chair. Like you can pull a chair over to yourself and lean on the chair. <laughs> so pick one. And we're going to take this shape for about three minutes.
So we've got one more minute. Or thereabouts. <laughs> things I really love about forward bending is that when you breathe you really can feel the breath in your back as opposed to normally when I breathe my back breath is all about the front right belly chest ribs like that all the breath happens in that area whereas in a pose like this because those areas are kind of closing in a little bit now my back becomes alive with the breath and I think it's pretty groovy it's a weird sensation but I like it <laughs> Right, so we're gonna take a nice big breath. We're gonna let go with a sigh. Oh, and then inhale and come up all the way. All right, now, the legs are gonna change and there's two options for this change. So the leg that I was just bending over, that guy's gonna be the up front leg. So I'm gonna bend that knee. And um, I'm gonna do a deer sort of variation. Um, but you could also do the swan pose, which you might know better as a pigeon. So that leg that you were just folding over, that's the leg that's gonna be up front. Your other leg is gonna either rotate around halfway, which is the deer. So I've turned that leg. So now my thigh bone of my right leg pokes out to the side. The thigh bone of my left leg po pokes up front. And I've got about a 90 degree angle at each knee. No one's getting out any uh, measuring devices. <laughs> to do the swan or the pigeon, I just straighten that leg all the way back behind me, okay? So it's up to you which one you think will be better. Now, I'm going to do my my deer here. So I've got the legs in that kind of 90 degree arrangement, but I'm going to fold forward onto some support, some props. So it becomes a little bit more like somewhere between the two poses. So I get a little bit of this really nice stretch in my left hip, which is the leg that's up front. Um, but I also get a little bit of the interesting sensation in my right hip um, that comes from the deer. So I kind of get a little bit of both, but not too strong in either direction. This is one of my new favorite po um, pose variations, at least during the pandemic, it's been a favorite. We'll see how things go as life continues afterwards. Um, I assume there's going to be an afterwards. <laughs> But, um, but for you, again, you might like the more upright version and do a, a more a full expression of the deer, or you might really want to undo this pressure that's in this hip socket um, based on how your body takes these poses. Now, all of that said, there's one more option, which is to lay on your back, put your um, front leg up on top of whatever leg was going to be the back leg, right? And then hold your legs. Um, or just let them rest on the floor with one leg over the other. And that will give you a similar uh, target area <laughs> for the sensation, but a little bit kinder in relationship to gravity and the floor. <laughs> the joints have more freedom of motion on, the, on their back. All right, so that was a, a lot of talk and it took up a whole minute. <laughs> so we're gonna stay for about two more minutes.
Okay, Aries, we're gonna take two more breaths. We're gonna move out of this position. Now we're gonna wind up back in our V shape, but oh, you might wanna do a little bit of other movement first <laughs> before coming back to that V shape. I like to do a little kind of, it's almost like a pivot or a shimmy on the hip socket that was in the back because that deer shape for me, and this is not true necessarily for everybody, but for me, it um, puts like this really interesting, very gentle pressure on my hip socket. So there's an internal rotation there, which is not a normal move. It's, I mean, it's, it's a human body move, but it's not something that I find myself in a lot. I don't sit down on the floor with my um, feet behind me, you know, like, like a W kind of shape with my legs. I don't do that very much these days. I never really did. But, but um, and so it's not a move that I do a lot of. I do a lot more external rotation in my, the course of daily life. So when I get that little internally rotated shape, it makes my hip socket feel really nice when it's over. Kind of broad and soft and really delightful. So <laughs> I'm a fan. This may not be true for you. Okay, so when you're ready, and you don't have to be ready yet. You need another minute, take another minute. I've got my legs back in the V shape. I'm gonna fold forward over the other leg, the one I didn't do last time. Oh, same ideas, which is fold toward it. You can build up some props if you want to give yourself something to lean into or lay on um, and then just fold the right amount for you to keep track of your lower back again if you want to do more of a side turn a side bend you certainly can it's really a choice this whole area all down my flank right this outer hip the side of my back no matter which one of these two choices I make I'm gonna hit that same area I'm just hitting it a little different Pick one and choose that for this week. <laughs> and then next time you practice, you can do another one. Or you might always have a preference. check in with your breath. <sighs> Find yourself right here in this moment, whatever is happening. See if there's a chance we can relax a little bit. We've got one minute left.
gonna take a nice big breath. Let go with a sigh. <sighs> and then inhale your way up. Or if you like coming up on the exhale, kind of squeeze it in your belly muscles, you can do it that way too. Oh. Okay, so the leg that I was leaning over, that guy's gonna be the leg up front. So when you're ready, you don't have to move right away. If you need a little bit of time to kind of recover from that oh, half dragonfly, side line, <laughs> sideways dragonfly, whatever you want to call that. Oops. You can, you can take that extra time. Now you may find, like I find um, for myself anyway, that like one of my hips um, has more internal rotation than the other. So the pose feels a little different on one side than it does on the other side. So I just make minor modifications in the angles of the legs. So that's still comfortable and appropriate. I've got just enough sensation in this hip socket, just enough sensation in this kind of external butt cheek, <laughs> outer hip area the external hip rotators live. Oh, and again, so it, maybe you're gonna do the swan instead. You're gonna have this back leg all the way straight behind you. Or do the upside down version. When you get there, get there. And if you're not there yet, no worries. <laughs> get there when it's an appropriate time for you. So the, the way that this practice works is that we stress the connective tissue um, that's what, when we relax the muscle, more of the pose goes into the connective tissue. Now, all yoga, connect, our bodies are not separate things, right? Like my big toe is not really separate from my left ear. Um, the, there is a, a sweater of connective tissue that every part of my body, including my internal organs, are all connected to every other part of my body. So it's really impossible to isolate tissue when we're doing anything really with our body, unless it's being surgically cut. <laughs> then you can isolate something, um, but probably not in, a, um, you know, <laughs> not in the same way at all. So uh, the, the practice of like relaxing the muscle and then holding a light level of stress on our tissue is if we hold it long enough, then there's a response by that tissue of hydrating itself. It produces um, an acid that then attracts water to it, and then the tissue hydrates, and that's what we're after. So in order to really do that, the body has to stay with that very gentle level of stress for at least two minutes. Like we can get away with some things like a minute and a half, but two minutes is generally um, the, Kind of measured amount of time that works best and then with yin yoga the, the people who developed this practice started experimenting with longer holding times i myself have experimented with longer holding times and what i've discovered for myself is that when i hold a pose for three minutes there's slightly more benefit than if i just hold it for a minute and a half so Somewhere between that second and third minute, there's a kind of um, magical relaxation or release that happens that I can feel come over me. Um, that's really nice and feels beneficial, but that's my timing. <laughs> so what I would suggest is somewhere in the range of two minutes, start to notice how you feel. So we're almost there. Um, <laughs> Notice if any um, changes have occurred that feel like the pose has gotten lighter or more friendly. There it is, that's our two minute mark. So we're gonna stay for one more minute. But while we're hanging out there, if you are feeling the opposite, uh, like your body is telling you we should leave this pose now, I would suggest going with your own instincts on things. And then work your way towards slightly longer holds if it ever feels appropriate. This, the real secret of the yin portion is to hold at a gentle place where I feel that, but I'm not being, I'm not, my buttons are not being pushed. I'm not tensing up. I'm not reacting. 
I can relax and hover, right? So we're gonna take a nice big breath. Let go with a big sigh. And then we're gonna gently release this shape, whatever it is. <laughs> and then give ourselves a moment to see where we landed. Now, the rest of our practice will be a little bit more of a flow. Now I'm gonna hold poses for very long. We might hold for a couple of breaths, three or four max. So it will definitely be <laughs> a different practice. And then we're gonna use our muscle to hold ourselves up uh, in various balancing poses. Now, you could go directly to a downward dog if you care to. I'm gonna do some little cat cow shapes, little cat shapes, where I tuck and tilt my pelvis back and forth first, and then I'm gonna take a downward dog. But you get to decide you want to follow along with me and do these little cats or if you want to do oh you know some people have preference for dogs I get to my downward dog I'm gonna kind of play with it a little bit walk in place now for some of us especially those of really tight hamstrings downward dog is a really tough pose so you can certainly bend your knees quite a lot and try to get a little more length down the front draw your armpits together a little bit oh. give yourself some structure for that upper body if this is just never your jam, it's okay to walk it together and come to a kind of a flat backed position. You can take the pressure out of your wrists, <laughs> out of your legs, and still get that little bit of lengthening through the back of the legs and the glutes. Oh. So eventually we're gonna stand all the way up. <laughs> I'm there now, but you might need a little more time. And then we're gonna take a position at what we're gonna call the top of our mat. Now, uh, <laughs> this will, for the rest of our time together this evening, <laughs> be the top of the mat. Even if we're not facing it, so we're facing the other way, this is going to remain the top of the mat, or the front. I use the word top and front interchangeably. <laughs> the side that's directly behind me, that is now the back or the bottom of the mat, and that will always be, even if I'm facing that side, it's going to be the back or the bottom. That way, the landmarks are consistent, and I think it will be easier to follow along if you can't see the screen the whole time. Okay, so find mountain pose. We're gonna stand with the toes, turn forward. I like hips distance apart. Some people like their um, uh, big toe mounds to touch. And then let your knees be just a tiny bit soft, but feel yourself grow just a little bit taller. So the abs are active, but we're not locking out the knees. And then get the weight on your feet even from your big, from your ball mound of your foot to your heel. Like get those even, spread out your toes a little bit. Get the inside arch to the outside arch even on both feet. And make sure that the feet are evenly weighted right and left. So that our weight is balanced perfectly or as close to perfectly as we can get right in the center of our foot. And then feel what happens because some of us have little things like injuries or other things that cause us to hold our body posture off of the center line. And there's nothing wrong with that per se, we have to get through life, but it's interesting to feel the, the implications of that, the outcomes of that. So when you're ready, take a nice big breath. You can sweep your arms out to the side or be a little bit tighter if you have plants. <laughs> We're gonna come to a nice big tall shape, grab the right wrist, give ourselves a little stretch over to the left. Coming back to the center, sinking into a chair pose. You can have a big chair pose where you're more like a bar stool or you can go way down into a deep squat. <laughs> Bring your palms to your heart, take a nice big breath. Exhale, we're gonna twist towards our right without sending that left knee forward if we can. 
Some people will find that they can bring their elbow all the way around their knee, but a lot of us will not. <laughs> Take in a big breath, come back to the center. We're gonna fold forward. Now, you're gonna put your right hand somewhere in front of you, about a foot. Some of us can put our hand on the floor, but when I do that, the, the angle between my hip joint and my thigh is completely closed. And so for some of us, that's gonna be way too sharp an angle. So you could use a block, to bring your torso up a little higher, or you can even use a piece of furniture or the wall. We're gonna take the left leg, pick it up, and then we're gonna tilt the left hip up on top of the right hip and stretch out in a big half moon balance. And again, you might wanna hold closer to the ground or higher up based on how your hip feels on that standing leg. Nice big breath. <laughs> Exhale, we're gonna put the left foot on the ground and come to a warrior two. Ooh, it might be a little wobbly. <laughs> Gonna come back to a reverse warrior and then over to a side angle. Stretch out that whole left side. Back to reverse. That's gonna give our right side a little stretch. Over to side angle, nice and big. As you come back to reverse, straighten out your front leg. So we're gonna make this into a triangle pose. Now you can float your hand, grab your ankle or your shin. Use a yoga block, <laughs> however you want to work with it. Your top arm can go straight up, rest it on your hip, wrap it behind your back. You can look up at the ceiling, down at your big toes, <laughs> big toe in this case, and all your toes. Woo. One more breath here, getting some length down your spine. Beautiful. Now bend your knee. We're gonna bring our toes around so that we're facing the, it, the side edge of the mat, so between the top and bottom. So we now have a wide angle forward bend. Now you can just dangle here and relax and feel the difference between the right and left side, or you can do this little pulsation with me. So I'm gonna turn my toes out just a notch, bend my knees to come more to a squat, and then straighten the legs out and fold in. It can be the tiniest bend in your knee, just a teeny tiny bend, and then back to straight, or you can hold one of the two shapes. A little bend in the knee, go back to straight legs. One more of the movement, a little bend in the knee. Now as I come back to my straight legs, I'm gonna turn my toes back in just a little bit. If that causes any trouble for your knee, your ankle, or your hip joint, turn them back out and fold here one more breath. Now we're gonna go backwards. So we're turning ourselves towards the back of the mat. I'm gonna reorganize my feet so I'm in that warrior two shape. So I've got a front knee bent. I'm gonna come all the way up, take a reverse warrior straight out my front leg, come into my triangle. And again, you can adjust your arms, Adjust the support, choose where you're looking. We'll hold for about three more breaths. <laughs> now bend your knee, come all the way back, reverse warrior, keep that front knee bent. Side angle, oh. reverse warrior. <laughs> Side angle, oh. reverse warrior. Now we're gonna take ourselves back to warrior two and then into our half moon balance. So if you need to find <laughs> a support like a block or <laughs> a wall or a piece of furniture, you can find that support and then we're gonna pick that right leg up and balance. Ooh, we might get wobbly. <laughs> Me and this rubber tree are very close right now. <laughs> Tucked right up underneath his leaves. Take one more breath. And then we're gonna come back, foot on the ground, fold forward, come up halfway, bend your knees. We're coming to our chair pose, hands together at your heart. Nice big breath, twist towards your left. And again, we're trying to keep the hips nice and steady so that right knee doesn't poke out. One more breath here. Beautiful, coming back to center, nice big tall stretch. Grab your left wrist, give yourself a little stretch over to the right. <laughs> Good. 
coming back to center and then finding your mountain pose. So we're facing the back edge of the mat. <laughs> finding our mountain pose. And notice if it feels any different. For me, quite often as we go, mountain pose gets easier and lighter, more comfortable to hold. Nice big breath, reach your arms overhead. We're gonna take the weight to the left leg and bring the right leg to a tree. And <laughs> so your tree pose can be like big toe balancing on the floor, touching the ground, or you can put your foot right up into your groin or like me, somewhere in the middle where you're just below your knee joint. And take a nice big breath, lift that leg up. We're gonna step ourselves back into our wide angle. This is gonna turn into a wide squat, but we're gonna squat like from the top now, rather than from the bottom. Like last time we were bent over, now we're standing up. So lift your arms up nice and tall, and however much your um, legs and hips and knees are cool with it, Bend your knees, come into a squat, and come back up to a tall stretch. Straight legs, and then bend the knees, maybe just an incremental amount <laughs> to come to that wide squat. One more of those. Ooh. And then coming back to a star pose where the legs are straight, but we're reaching the arms out. We're gonna take the arms around behind the back. Now, you can lace your fingers together, grab one wrist. I'm gonna use a strap. I find it a little bit better. So I'm turning my toes in. I'm gonna hold the strap behind my back with a little bit of strap in between each hand. So my arms are behind me. <laughs> then as I fold into my wide angle forward bend, I can bring my arms up. Oh, and get a little shoulder stretch. Be careful of buckles. <laughs> I've accidentally smacked myself in the lip or the tooth with them before, it's not pleasant. more breaths. I'm going to release the arms. I'm bending my knees just a tiny bit and kind of giving my arms a little shake, <laughs> shoulder girdle a little shake. And then I'm going to step myself back up to the top of the mat and I'm trying to go directly into my tree <laughs> on that right side. So I'm going to come up Step into tree. Oh, I didn't quite make it in one step, but two maybe, or maybe three. <laughs> Find in that tree pose, as balanced as you can. Ooh, I've got a plant tickling my armpit. <laughs> two more breaths. <laughs> That's disconcerting. <laughs> when you're ready, put your foot on the ground. Nice, big, tall stretch. Ooh, we're gonna find our way <laughs> back to our mountain pose. Now friends, we need to find a seat on the floor and then from there, we're gonna do a little boat pose <laughs> and then some relaxation. So some people can squat and sit directly down on the floor. I'm gonna go through a downward dog. So <laughs> nice big breath, lift and then fold forward and then step back into downward dog, <laughs> which I'm then gonna turn into a tree pose. I mean a tree pose, a child's pose. <laughs> Apparently I have tree pose on the brain. And then from this child's pose, oh, which I'm gonna hold for one more breath. <laughs> I'm gonna turn that into my boat pose. So I'm just gonna come around and sit on my mat. Now, there are so many ways to do boat pose. <laughs> I'm gonna do my favorite one tonight, which is, um, I'm gonna take my peace sign fingers and I'm gonna loop them around my big toes, and then I'm gonna try to hold my legs up straight <laughs> in front of me. And this can get really roly-poly if your back rounds and your pelvis tucks under, you're gonna go over. So you're gonna wanna lift, <laughs> bring your breastbone up and lift through your abs to hold yourself up. <laughs> you can also hold lower on the legs, like behind the knees or down uh, on the middle of your shins. So I'm gonna get myself floating, grab those big toes, and then whew, straighten out the legs, and then oh, I'm engaging through my abs, pushing my feet up. And again, my hamstrings are a little bit looser, yours might not be, so hold lower, and you'll get the same effect. <laughs> and this is a fun boat pose. Oh, 
I've seen pictures of bears doing it, so it must be good if bears do it, right? <laughs> One more breath. Ooh, we'll bring the feet together. We're gonna roll down onto our back. I can't believe an hour has almost gone by, but it has. So, <laughs> once you're on your back, I need a, like a little transition, right? So I'm gonna do a little happy baby. So I'm gonna bring my knees in. Now, the more traditional pictures of happy baby, people hold their feet with the sole of the foot facing up, but that's a, again, a pretty deep shape for the hip. So more my favorite is to take the big toes, touch them together, and then just reach in and grab the middle of my shin so that my arms are on the inside and I'm not pulling my pelvis off the floor. I can press my sacrum into the ground <laughs> and it feels nice in my low back. And then I could do this little rock that feels oh so nice <laughs> after a boat pose. And you could, or, um, you could do either version of the happy baby slash some people call it dead bug, which is really charming and I save it for Halloween time. <laughs> I like, I like having that as a, a unique, <laughs> special, Halloween's a special time of year for me. <laughs> so I like having extra special yoga pose names for that time of year. Oh, so I've got my legs stretched out. Now I just put a pillow underneath my thighs because that lets my hip flexors really relax and my low back is so much happier with me. So if you ever have that thing where when you lay on your back on the floor, your low back is like, no, <laughs> having none of this, try putting something under your legs. It's magical. And then some people are very comfortable stretched out. If you want, you can put your legs up, like up over a chair or over the couch or up a wall. Just position your body in a comfortable position. Take a deep breath and then, ah, let go, yogis, let go. You might feel kind of that, you know, that whatever, the poses give us a little boost. Sometimes they relax us, sometimes they energize us, whatever the case is, let yourself sort of settle into it. <laughs>
out move and just notice your breath again. Take a big breath. Give yourself a big old stretch. Oh, wiggle your fingers and toes, wrist and ankles. Oh. <laughs> when you're ready, you can bring yourself to a seated position. You can take all the time you need for that. <laughs> I'm not gonna rush you, you're at your house. <laughs> Get my namaste warmed up. It won't take long. It's warm here. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully this yoga class has given you a little, little relief, <laughs> a little restart so you can go forward into your evening or your day <laughs> feeling a little better. Nice big breath. You can do a sigh or an ohm. Namaste, everyone. <laughs> Welcome.